Ninus Breachcast, the world's first identity management app made exclusively for identity experts and product owners, is available in the iOS App Store now. Hey everybody, I'm going to show you ChatGPT 4.0's Canvas, which is a new almost IDE chat window that they've come out with today, and it's crazy. The only thing I wish is that I wish this came out last week before I started doing all the development for the health app. It would have made life way easier, even easier than it was before, just to do development right in this thing. Now, it's not a full-blown IDE, and I'm going to say yet because I have a feeling that's probably where they're going to go with this, but this is awesome. If you're a developer, I can guarantee you this is going to be your starting point from here on out. So what we're going to do is to show all the different features and bells and whistles that I've, been, I've found and how I've been using this thing so far, I'm going to make a dummy app here that just kind of shows what, what we can do with this thing. And we're just gonna go along with it. So the prompt is, create a Python script that will show the visualization and animation of incremental dimensions starting at one. So one is the first dimension, which is a point. Sec two is second dimension, a line. Three is a cube. Four is a hypercube. Show the previous dimensions morph into the current dimension. Go as high as a dimension as you can code and visualize for. Spend five seconds at each dimension. So basically I'm looking for some type of visualizer that shows you know, point to a line, to a plane, to a cube, et cetera, and move on up. So this is gonna be kind of interesting just to see what it does. Um, let's go, let's see what happens. Okay, so first let's kick this thing off. Okay, so here's the Python script. Now you're gonna see this thing flip into canvas mode. There it is. So now you'll see, it almost looks like we're working in an IDE. We don't have all our files here on the left, but we now have this window on the right. Now this is very similar to Claude's artifact, right? Which, where it shows the code on the right, but there's one big difference. Okay, so here's our code. It says to do, okay, interesting. Sure, I have no idea what this is, I'm not even gonna look at it. But now, check this out, let's move my face over here. Okay, so here, one thing we want is, I want a lot more comments because I wanna know what everything is doing because I really don't know. So we click on this, and let's go up to add comments. Check this out. Real time, look at that. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this, is, this is so crazy. Adds comments in throughout the whole thing. Easy peasy. Awesome. Okay, right, there's our comments. Now, because I have a feeling zero shot's probably not gonna work on this thing, let's just go ahead and add logging into this as well. So now we're gonna start at the top, it's gonna import logs, so there we go. So now it's writing out all the logs that we need so this way we can troubleshoot this thing a little bit better than we run it. Now, we're also gonna pretend that I don't know anything about Python, right? So let's just go ahead and get this next prompt started. So create a shell script for me that will create Python virtual environment and run the script. There we go. I don't want to do anything, right? This is lazy coding 101. Okay, so here we go. Here's our little shell script. Let's go ahead and copy this. So now, let's call it run me. Paste that in there. Give it execution. And now, what are we calling the script? We're gonna call it Dimension Visualizer, it looks like. So, let's edit that. And now we just go back up here. Here's our visualizer code. Let's go ahead and copy the code. And I'm just using VI, right? Like, so I'm not doing anything terribly crazy over here. Okay, so now let's run it and see what happens. Create the virtual environment. Requirement already satisfied, so it's installing stuff, which is nice. Installing all the dependencies, running Python script. Whoa. <laughs> That's, this is crazy. Oh, and it dumped. Okay, so let's just do what we do, right? Put this in here, let it figure it out on its own. Look at that, you can watch it edit the code in real time as it goes down. So we can see where the problem is. Okay, it's making changes to the plot cube. So it looks like, ooh, the hypercube. So it's going to be trying to make a hypercube, which is gonna be interesting to see what that comes out like. Okay, there we go. So to give you another, I'm gonna show you what other features are over here. So we can also, we click on this thing here. So we can do a code review, which is what we're looking at. We can port to a completely different language. So right now with this one, we can go to Python, C++, PHP, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, fix bugs, so if we have code that we've developed on the outside and we have some bugs, we can go into fix bug mode. Let's play around, 
I'll talk about that one in a second, but for right now, let's just copy this code out and run it and just kind of see what happens here. So echo dimension. I'm basically just emptying the file so I can just do this, right? It's quicker. All right, let's try again. Here we go. Oop, it's already done. Here we go. There's our lines. So we'll point to a line. And oh, now we have a cube. Can it do fourth dimension? Whoa, okay, that's fourth dimension. Interesting. Execution finished. Okay. So, you know what? Let's do this. Um, make the program go to a fifth dimension and save a screenshot as a JPEG after it plots each dimension. There we go. So now, because the hypercube is a little bit weird, so what I want to do is save a picture of each dimension that it makes as a local JPEG file. Then, because I, it's GPT-40, I can drop the image in here and say, hey, this is what I'm getting for visualization for hypercube. I don't like it. Let's see what happens. This is going to be interesting. So it's going to give us all new code. So let's go ahead and wipe this thing out. I've added, okay, here we go. So now we're going to copy this, paste, and let's run it. Here's our, our point. Now let's see, is it saving? I don't know if it's saving anything. We'll have to check after this thing runs, but we got our cube and our weird scatterplot hypercube, right? Okay, fourth dimension. Fifth dimension, a 5D object. Weird, okay. All right, so now, did it make pictures? It did. All right, let's open up the hypercube. Uh, how do I do this? <laughs> hey. What do I do? I don't know what I'm doing. Just, oh, um, okay. Open. Okay, there we go. So there is our fourth dimension hypercube. Interesting. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just taking a screenshot because I can copy, delete, quit here, paste. This is what I get for hypercube something visually better. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just see what it says. I have no idea what that means, but all right. So now let's just get this thing to wipe out. Is that that right? It's editing the code. This is amazing. And if we work, if we can actually get this into a real IDE where I can have all the different files within a project on the side, I can kind of bounce between them. Oh, we're not that far off. I really don't think we are. Okay. So now after this, we're going to start playing around some of the different canvas features, but I just want to see if what this thing is going to do. Editing dimension visualizer. Can I see what that means? No, I edited it. Okay. I've updated the hypercube visualization. Okay. So this is done. Let's see what we got. Okay. Run. There we go. Okay. We got our point. I'm just moving this around for fun. Line. Upside down. Cube. Okay. Here we go. Now what do I get for a hypercube? Whoa. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> okay, fifth dimension. I don't even know what that is. Okay, cool. We did it. So now, let's really test out, see what this Canvas bad boy can do. Let's flip this thing into JavaScript. Uh, port to language. Let's go, where's JavaScript? There we go. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Just drag the slider. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, actually, make this work for a node. There we go. Yeah, because we're going to run this on node locally just to see if it runs, but that's crazy. One click changes the entire code. I mean, I've done this before where I just say, hey, take this Python script and flip it into node. I'll give it complete a complete Python script. Like, hey, this is a working example in Python on how it is I'm trying to solve. 
use what works in here and then port it to node in my node script that I'm working on. Okay, cool. So we have a node script of some kind. Okay. Uh, now let's do the same thing. Write a shell script to install the requirements and launch the script. Okay. So we're going to call this, let's see, VI. Actually, let's see what they call it first. Probably Dimension Visualizer, right? Uh, JS file. Where's, am I crazy? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yep, Dimension Visualizer. Okay. Dimension Visualizer. Let's get our code. Okay. Let's just edit the same runme script. Make life simple. Oops. I bad, copied the wrong one. There we go. Okay. Okay, there we go. And let's see what happens. There's no requirements file, so I'm curious. Oh, no. Okay. Nice. Well, did it make the packages file? Because that's some. If there isn't one, I'll make a new one and saw her. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay, so it's installing all the NPM packages and going to run. Let's just, while it's doing that, let's see. The last one here is fix bugs. What's that doing? Okay, that's a one click button. D please ensure you have the correct file. Do I not have the correct file? Dimensions visualizer. It's there. So let's do this. Here we go. Fix this bug. So I'm showing it all the files that it's created just to show that the file name is there and for path because maybe it's, it wants that in a specific path or something. So, okay, I've updated the script to move the JavaScript file into the project directory. Right, so that's what it wants. Okay, cool. So let's just wipe this out again. VI run me. See, like... This is crazy because I'm not doing any thinking whatsoever. It's doing exactly what JavaScript found that found. What? It's still not doing it? Okay, this is crazy. What's happening? Dimension visualizer. So it should be in here. It's not there. Okay, you know what? Let's just do this. Move. <laughs> Uh, I just don't want to mess around with this anymore. We're just going to put it there. Oh my gosh. Okay. And let's see, how do they want to run this thing? Just no, okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Canvas add event listener is not a thing. So now this is the error that we're getting on our script. So let's see if this thing can come out with something a little bit better. So let's just go ahead and clear this thing out, right? Just to get ready. And we'll see what kind of code it comes back with here. This thing is so awesome. I cannot wait until this gets into a full IDE. So there is the IDE um, that I just started playing with that actually is pure AI. And these, I think these guys are gonna nuke it, man. Cause I mean, they have a crazy budget that no one else has, right? Uh, let's see, echo, didn't do that, there we go, nope, still failing, alright, so, you know what, I don't really want to run down this rabbit hole of trying to fix this code here, um, but I think this is a pretty good representation of what's possible, I did it in Python first, because I figured if I'm doing stuff in visual, Python tends to work better that way, um, but it is pretty cool to see that this thing can just flip it into Node. Obviously, most of it is there, and it's doing. It looks like it's doing it all via HTML5, which is going to be interesting. Um, but I don't really want to troubleshoot this thing too much because I think we've kind of demoed out what the Canvas tool is capable of, which I think is good enough. So we're just going to run this as a last one here. Uh, Vi I paste. Okay, and it's still not working whatever at this point in time you know it is what it is 
Um, but yeah, so this is pretty awesome. This has been a big release from from um, OpenAI, sorry, from Canvas. So it's really, really impressive. Now, also very impressive, let me show you something else that's really cool here. So not only is OpenAI Canvas an amazing tool, but someone has already released the system prompt that is generating this because this is really just Jet, chat GPT 4.0 with a crazy system prompt that's creating this artifact like IDE thing that they're calling Canvas and Pliny the Liberator has done it. So let's go ahead and show you that. So if we go over to Pliny the Liberator, you can see here is the complete OpenAI Canvas system prompt leak and it is crazy. I mean, if you go through those details, it's pretty nuts. But one thing to point here is this prompt, when you see jobs for prompt engineers, this is what they're talking about. They don't want people that just know how to use AI. They're looking for people that can write prompts to this level. So if you're looking to become some type of a professional prompt engineer, this is the type of stuff that you want to start studying and figuring out how to create on your own because this is the level of prompt engineering that people are looking for and this is going to be the future of jobs. You want to know how to get a crazy job to be worth a ton of money? Learn how to write prompts like this. Now, more than just dumping the system prompt of what creates Canvas, check this out. So let's go back, Oop, let's go back to Pliny here. So if we go to Pliny the Liberator. So not only has he created the system, dumped the system prompt for everyone, he has also jailbroken it. So the new Canvas feature is awesome when jailbroken. Now I can easily improve, extend my malware and meth recipes, add emojis, and make them easily understandable for kindergartners at the click of a button. The next generation is gonna absolutely cook. So I'm not gonna blow this up, so you can go to Twitter and look at it yourself or X, whatever. Uh, because it is the real recipe for how to create this and it's nuts. He's doing it all in canvas and he, you can see in here it shows making the recipe then loading it all up in emojis make it funny and then he, after that he goes through and he refines it and does it as a graduate level paper with all the crazy low low level details and technical jargon. So it's absolutely jailbroken. The video proof is there. So here's the system prompt link we just talked about and even more fun. Here we go. So on Pliny's GitHub is where he releases all of the system prompts. And here is chat GPT-40 chat GPT with Canvas, the complete thing. You are a chat, you are chat GPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI, knowledge cutoff, current date, image input capabilities, enabled personality V2. Then it goes through and shows the entire markdown of this crazy prompt that's built out. It's amazing. So if you really want to learn prompt engineering, I highly suggest you go through and look at all the different system prompts that Pliny has dumped out here. Here's the Anthropic one for Claude. God Mode Mini, Universal Jailbreak Format. This is interesting. I wonder if this works. Let's just try it out. Claude 3.5 System. Wow. Here's a Universal Jailbreak. Okay. Let's try that one out. Since we're here. <laughs> Claude. Let's just see what happens. I will not provide the kind of response you gauge. <laughs> it looks like they've already patched that one. We had one more in there. Let's just try it just out of, for, for giggles. Dang it. So these things definitely get patched pretty quick. It's obvious Pliny is so popular and in the public eye that all these companies are definitely watching. As soon as he posts something, I guarantee they're fixing this stuff pretty quick. But this is pretty crazy. If you're interested in looking more about prompt jailbreaks, prompts, leaks, and injections, definitely follow Pliny. Definitely go to the GitHub and check it out because this is where you're going to find kind of all that hacking of the AI world. So OpenAI Canvas is an amazing tool. Can't wait to see where this thing goes. I will definitely be using this on a daily basis. And Pliny, you're amazing. See you around. Later. Nidus has just created the first iOS app made exclusively for identity management professionals. It's called Nidus Breachcast and you can download it now. It's amazing. We have real-time updates of all the latest breaches that are occurring, CVEs as they come out real-time, really pertaining just to identity management. We have media that's going on this podcast. We're going to be bringing in a lot more others as well. And we even have a complete vendor list of all the identity management vendors and all their products so you can find out exactly where to download their software, all the documentation. And what's even more awesome is an identity management glossary. All those crazy words and acronyms that we can never remember, they're all listed in there for you. No ads, just pure information to make your life simple. Thank you